Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a member of the Bogenhafen Barons Imperial Nobility Blood Bowl team. Okay here we go so with the Human Nobility team we're painting the Bogenhafen Barons and I'm assuming that's how we're saying it so what we've done we've primed the mini in Corax White now, in terms of why I've primed in Corax white, it was a decision I had to make, really, is do I want to spend more time painting white over black, or do I just want the white there and just go back and correct any issues I have? So I went with the uh, correct and any potential issues I have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint all the kind of under bits uh, first. And for that, we're going to use Wildwood. So we're painting all the leather bits. So we've got the belt. Uh, we've got the straps on the gloves. And we can be afford to be a little bit messy in some of these places uh, that we're working on. Now the reason I'm using Wildwood as a contrast paint is because actually once we're, once we're done with the Wildwood we don't have to touch it again because uh, it will kind of shade and highlight itself. Now we need to do inside the pads here as well so because we've got the kind of straps so just be careful all those bits that are going to be white just take your time around the edges but all the straps and the plating itself we can cover that so just work your way around with that and we'll come back and uh, we'll start the gold next uh, or the main armor part once we've got that wildwood down we'll, like i said we'll do the we'll do the armor panel so i'm using retributor armor for this now in terms of how much i've thinned it down a uh, little little splash of water nothing more and all we're going to do is just paint all the armor panels with this retro drama now because we're painting over white you may notice that it perhaps is maybe as shiny or it doesn't cover as well so we just need to potentially use two thin coats so you can see that it's covering okay but it's not uh, it's not perfect so I'm not going to spend too much time showing you this but basically check the box art all the armor panels things like you know the knee pads uh, the van braces wrist guards the hand guards uh, and of course the shoulder pads get them all painted with retributor armor give them a second coat if you need it and then we'll come back and shade it next. So with the gold done, we want to give it a little bit of shading. So the colour we're going to use for that is Reichlin Flesh Shade. Now, I'm using it straight from the pot, but obviously I'm not putting too much on. just want to make sure it settles in those recesses. Now, you see that I've, I've gone over and I've made a little bit of a mistake. What I'll be doing is before I come to do all the white bits and the uh, dark pink is I'm going to be using the Corax white again to just tidy the model up so don't worry too much if you make a little bit of a mistake just try and be as tidy as you can so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, regular flesh shade over all the gold we've just finished and then uh, we'll come back and make sure it's properly dry come back and we'll highlight the gold next once that Reichlin flesh shade is dry we're going to highlight it and for that I'm using some Liberator gold now I've got it here on the palette and I've not actually uh, thinned it down with any water at all. Just uh, make sure the palette is focused in the right place there. I just want a little bit on, on my brush, not too much. And essentially what we're looking to do is catch all the, the edges of this gold, working our way around, just giving it a bit of a bit of a highlight. Just like that. So you've got a nice bright shiny gold so all we're going to do is work our way all the way around the model you know like I said where you can if you can catch a sharp edge run your brush down it otherwise just take your time so go all the way around use this liberator gold to highlight any gold bits you want to and then we'll come back and we'll do the gloves and the black parts next with that bit of gold then uh, we're just going to go on to the silver next then when we highlight the silver, we'll also highlight the gold a little bit more using uh, using chrome. But the base I'm using for the silver is Iron Warriors, which is a nice dark uh, silver. And it's not a colour uh, that perhaps you'd associate with the kind of bright colours that these models are going to have. But the reason I'm using Iron Warriors is because it just saves... You don't have to worry about using null oil on it. You can just... Uh, highlight up from there so we want to just paint all the silver bits so you've got the belt buckle and again try and be as careful as you can because it just saves time going into tidy up later on and then you've got lots of clips so you've got the kind of end of the strap here you've got these clips on the gauntlets there which is just holding on the the defend uh, the armor 
and then we've got it on the on the back side as well you've got these clips uh, on the knee pad so again check the box art if you're not sure but there's very little kind of silver on this model so just work your way around get that done and we'll highlight it next so for the highlight on the silver we're going to use chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Now this isn't thinned down, it's thinned down enough. It's designed to go through airbrushes. So just make sure you haven't got too much on your brush uh, for when you come to the model. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch just those sharpest edges on the silver. And I've probably gone a little bit wild there, so I'm going to have to go and tidy that up a little bit. Uh, but the other thing we can do as well is I'm going to show you on the, just here, is on the pads. We can just catch those sharp edges on the corner because that just gives the pads a much brighter uh, edge to them. And you can do that all the way around uh, the armour as well. So work your way around the pads, work your way around all the clasps with the uh, with the chrome. If you make a mistake like I did on that first bit of silver, you can repair it. And then we'll come back and we'll do the gloves next. So once all that silver is done and you're happy with it, we're going to move on to the black areas. So we're going to use a bad and black for this, just with a little bit of water to thin it down, because a bad and black can be quite thick. And we're going to paint the shoes, being careful uh, not to go onto the socks. Uh, so just work your way around there gently, slowly does it. It's covering quite well at this point. If you find that it doesn't uh, cover as well or starts to just thin out a little then obviously you just need to go back in with a second thin coat uh, and the other thing we're going to do with the black is we're going to do the gloves so again just take your time working that on now you don't need me to tell you to be careful around the areas you've already finished but I'm going to tell you that anyway so just take your time get them all painted and then we'll come back and we'll highlight all the black next once we're happy the black is dry, we'll go and highlight it. Now I've painted the base uh, black as well, just to uh, add some more contrast on there. And I've managed, every time I touch it, I seem to uh, smudge it. So I'm going to have to use a little bit of varnish on there. So in terms of the colour we're going to use to highlight the black, we're going to use Mechanica Standard Grey. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to catch as many edges as we can and just work our way uh, around the model. So just take your time with this. Now you're going to have to paint some of these edges in. We're looking to follow some of you know, the raised areas. So brush control is important here. Uh, so just something for you to, to work on and practice if you think you need to. So again, just taking my time, working my way around, highlighting, uh, catching edges where I can. And then of course we've got the hands as well. So for the hands, or the fingers I should say. Again we're looking at just catching some of these edges to get the highlight on. So do that on both gloves and then we'll come back and I think we're going to the purple next. Because we're going to do the purple next what I am going to do is I'm going to work my way around the model and make sure that I've corrected any mistakes I've made. So if I've got um, gold uh, where it's going to be white or purple I'm going to correct that and then we'll come back and uh, make a start. Next up, we'll uh, get on to that uh, deep pink. So the color I'm using is Screamer Pink. And that's the effect uh, that I'm going for. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint these wide uh, bits of banding on the model, taking my time to make sure that I don't get any on those white bits. Now, if I do get some on the white bits, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we can go in and we can fix it, but I just really want to take my time because the less time I spend repairing stuff, the more time I can spend uh, painting all the other models. So another top tip for when we're doing this is obviously with Blood Bowl, you'll get six players, uh, and you, oh sorry, you'll get six models, and then that's repeated, so you get two of each model. So a good way uh, of breaking up who or breaking up the fact that you've got identical models is to paint these uh, the opposite way round. So for example, here I'm doing white on the insert. You could potentially do purple as an insert uh, or the deep pink as an insert as well, uh, just to offer that variation as well. So um, you won't get two identical uh, models in terms of the paint job. So work your way around, getting that all done nice and tidy. Take your time. If you need to go in and repair it, then do that with some uh, Corax white and then we'll come back and shade it and highlight it next. When we've taken our time very carefully, 
uh, around the model to get all that done. We just want to shade some of these areas. Now I'm going to use uh, Drakenhof Nightshade for this because the blue uh, contrasts nicely with the, the pink. Now if you haven't got Drakenhof Nightshade, don't worry too much. You can use Nuln Oil if you want. And what if you can see me there, what I'm making sure to do is just working it into some of those recessed areas. I'm not covering uh, the area with them. I'm just popping it towards the bottom just to simulate a kind of darker shadow uh, in those areas there. And the reason I'm doing this is because it, it just, just enhances uh, the look of the model. So you can see I've taken my time around some of these areas, been really careful. So just work this Drakenhof Nightshade, or if you want to use Null Oil, like I said, that's absolutely fine, into some of these uh, recessed areas. And then once it's dry, we'll come back and highlight it all up again. Okay, so once that uh, Drakenhof Nightshade is dry, we're just going to take some pink horror. And I've just thinned this down a little bit. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. And essentially what we're looking to do uh, on the purple areas is catch those sharp edges. And then when we've got a raised edge, just pull our brush along it. And you can see it's a real easy, straightforward way of highlighting the, uh, the pink. And it gives us a really nice, easy effect there. So work your way around the rest of the pink areas, catching those edges with the edge of the brush. Really nice and easy way of doing it. And then that's most of the model done in terms of the dark colours. We move on to the light colours next. We'll do the white next. So for shading the white bits, we're going to use Apothecary White Contrast Paint. Um, now I'm using this straight out of the pot. Uh, but the key is to make sure I've not got too much on my brush. So I'm going to work it around the socks. Now the socks will take it, uh, or they're quite large areas, so we can just work it around there. And then when it dries, it'll find itself uh, into those kind of recesses and give us a really nice kind of uh, shaded white that we can then quite simply highlight up. So that's um, one of the socks. Sorry if I want to focus there. Uh, we're just working our way around with the apothecary white onto the socks there. Make sure that we don't stop where we get the whole area painted so that it all dries as one and we don't get any uh, any lines left in there. And then we've got the areas in here. So again, make sure we haven't got too much paint on our brush, not too much apothecary white on our brush, and just just drop it in there to catch any bits that have uh, that have got folds. Let that dry, um, and we'll come back and highlight it next. When the apothecary white's dry, we're just going to take some white scar, and again, make sure not to have too much on your brush. And we're just going to look to catch those most raised areas where the uh, where the apothecary white hasn't settled, just following the contours uh, on the model, just to get a nice highlight. So work your way around, catch all those with the white scar, and then we'll come back and we'll do the feathers and the facial features next. So for the pipe and the feathers, I'm just going to use some skeleton horde contrast paint. So make sure that the uh, the been returned to the the white state if you have uh, painted over them and just again not too much on the brush just a little bit just to tint them slightly and just work that all the way over the feathers don't forget to do the other side as well and we've also got the pipe quite why this uh, this lad is smoking a pipe whilst playing blood bowl I don't know but it works for him so just get that done nice and simple both sides and then we'll come back and uh, we'll work on uh, darkening those feathers next. Darkening the feathers is as simple as just adding more skeleton hoard except probably about halfway up. So just add that more skeleton hoard about halfway up and what you'll start to see then is it'll start to darken uh, towards the tips. And then if you want to add some more towards the tips after that's dry, you can. I probably will, just to give that extra effect. While we let the skeleton hoard dry on the feathers, we can have a little look at the uh, some of the flesh. So I'm going to base this with Kislev Flesh. I'm going to make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. 
and we're just looking to paint all the skin with this obviously being careful around those areas uh, we've already finished so just get it all based with the Kislev flesh and then we'll come back don't forget the face uh, we'll come back shade it and highlight it shading the flesh is uh, pretty straightforward just going to use uh, a little bit of Reichland flesh shade um, and we're not going to flood the area we just want to cover it over so that uh, it goes into the recesses. You can see I've got very little on my brush doing this. Because if we flood it, it means we've got to do more work uh, correcting it later on. Whereas if we just take our time, use a little bit, then life is easier. So do that as well. Don't forget his face. Being careful not to get it over on his beard. Let that dry. And then uh, we'll come back and highlight it. To highlight the uh, flesh, we're going to go back to uh, the Kislev that I've got on my palette, my Red Grass Games wet palette. Um, and I'm going to make sure I've got very little uh, paint on the brush. So let's see if we can do this on the camera without losing focus. So all I'm looking to do is catch those really kind of high areas, like the nose and the cheekbones. And then that's that's the face highlighted. If you want to go a little bit further, you can. Uh, but I'm really happy with that because it's going to be in a little bit of shadow. Obviously, don't forget the uh, the arms as well. So with the beard, I'm going to use contrast on the beard. So make sure it goes back to that, that normal white colour. And then we'll do that and finish the model. So to finish up the model, I'm going to give this guy a grey beard because he's a little bit older. You can use whatever colour you want. But I'm just using Basilicanum grey contrast paint. And you can see there... Just be careful around the bits you finish, but it gives you a nice grey beard. And if you need to go in and tidy up after, you can. But it gives you that nice grey beard. You don't have to worry about going in and highlighting uh, or doing any of those shenanigans. Job done. So, base the miniature to match the rest of your Blood Bowl team. I'm just going to just leave this one blank while I decide uh, what I'm going to do with the rest of my boys and girls. Um before I kind of uh, get into some Christmas Blood Bowl. So uh, that's it. We'll have a look at him on the turntable next once he's all dry and we've uh, thrown a transfer on his back there. And uh, let's see how he's turned out. So there we have it. This member of the Bogenhafen Barons Imperial Nobility Blood Bowl team is ready for the pitch. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. I really hope you found it easy and straightforward to follow and hopefully you'll get some fantastic results. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure that I'm making the content you guys want to see. Do you want to see more Blood Bowl, more Age of Sigma, more 40k, different manufacturers? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon where you can get exclusive access to me, exclusive content, as well as monthly frequently asked questions. You can use the links to Goblin Gamer where you can get up to 20% for all your wargaming and Blood Bowl needs. And there's also a link to my recommended equipment. All those do go to help support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything additional. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.